So welcome everyone. My name is Rita Stevenson and I'm the Executive Director for the Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities Council of Tarrant County. If you're unfamiliar with the council, the IDD Council was formed in 2015 to transform the region into an inclusive community where people with intellectual and developmental disabilities thrive. Online events we have include our caregiver education sessions that are held each Tuesday from noon to one. And then we also have a monthly council meeting that we have online the first Thursday of each month from 8.30 to 10. We will be having a fundraiser and we want to egg your house. So if you guys would like for the IDD Council to come out and place eggs in your yard the Friday or Saturday prior to Easter, go to our website, visit idcouncil.org forward slash eggs. We also want to be sure to recognize AmeriGroup and Texas Workforce Solutions for sponsoring this event. Natasha at Texas Workforce has been a tremendous help in getting this event put together. Natasha, would you like to introduce yourself to those that may be new to us today? Yes, hello everyone. My name is Natasha Mendenhall. I'm a transition counselor at Texas Workforce Vocational Rehabilitation. Um, I will be reaching out to you all through the email that you registered with. So if you're not currently connected to a counselor with us, I can help you get connected and understand how Texas Workforce can help you reach your employment goals. Thank you, Natasha. So with that, I would like to introduce Ms. Robin Koontz with Achievable Employment Solutions. Robin, it's all yours. Thanks, Rita. Hi, everybody. I am so excited to be here with you today. As Rita said, my name is Robin Koontz, and I am an employment service provider. I work a lot with the Texas Workforce Solutions, and I'm also a transition consultant. I've worked in a lot of your schools to help your teachers to learn how to prepare you to get that job and to live independently after you graduate from high school. And uh, I've actually worked with a lot of students in my day. I know I probably don't look it, but I'm very old. And I worked for a long time in the school system as a teacher and as a diagnostician and as a transition specialist. So I've had a lot of experience working with young people to help them to find jobs and help them to be independent people. So I hope that you get a lot out of this session and I really appreciate you participating in this with me. So my topic for tonight is job exploration. But before we can start looking for what type of job or how to find a job, we need to understand ourselves what we're good at, what's hard for us, what we like, what we don't like. And we need to have some experiences before we go out and get that job. So the, today we're gonna talk a lot about that. And next week we'll focus more on how do I find the job now that I know what type of job I wanna get. So we're gonna start off though today by doing a little game. Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want every single one of you who likes to play video games to turn your camera on. Starting to light up. Look how many of you like to play video games. Wow, that's kind of cool seeing all of you guys appear like that. Now I want everybody to turn their cameras off again. This time I want you to turn your cameras back on if your favorite food is pizza. Okay, I see Miranda, you look pretty excited about pizza. Can you turn on your uh, microphone and tell us what your favorite topping is that you put on your pizza? I like cheese. Very cool, I like both of those too. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Okay, okay. we're gonna do a couple more, cameras off. All right, now turn your cameras back on if you have a brother or sister. They're coming on pretty quickly here. Lots of people have brothers and sisters. Okay, everybody, we're gonna do a couple more cameras off. Okay, now I want you to turn your camera back on if you have ever had a paying job in the community. If you had a job where you made a paycheck in the community, if you had one in the past or you have one now, I want you to turn your camera on. Okay, a couple of you, that's awesome. I worked at CVS <gasps> and you? I got the job through Texas Workforce. Did you do it during the summer? Yep. Are you, so did you do it for the, just for the summer or are you still working there? I did it just for the summer. 
Very cool. I worked with a lot of young people at CVS. That was a good job. Thank you for sharing that. Very cool. It looks like a lot of you are taking advantage of what Texas Workforce can do for you. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, we're going to do one more. So turn your cameras off. We're going to play this game one more time. Turn on your camera if you have chores or jobs that at home that you do on a regular basis. If you have something that's your job or chore to do at home, turn on your camera. Boy, we got lots of, a lot of people lighting up. Very cool. This makes my heart really happy to see people having chores in their house. We're going to talk a lot about that in a minute. Can you turn on your microphone and tell us which chore you do in your home that you like the best? Oh, that's a hard choice. Um, just name just any. Doing your laundry. You take care of your own laundry. That's a very good lesson to learn. And I know that it probably helps your parents out a bunch. Can you turn on your microphone and tell us what chore you like the best that you do in your home? Uh, feeding the dogs, because I always do that. Great. Very good. And I also uh, do the pool outside we have. Very good. All right. Well, that I'm so proud of all of you guys that are doing chores. That's awesome. Okay. I do. I clean the bathroom every Saturday. And you, so that means you do it on a regular basis if you're doing it every week. That's super. Very proud of you for that. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. First, I want to tell you about why it's important to do chores. You're probably wondering, why is this lady asking me about chores and why I do them in, the, in my house? And it's because chores is the first job you will ever have. It is the safest place that you have to learn how to be a good worker, is working in your own home. So that's why doing chores is so important. And if you're not already doing some, you should be asking your family to give you or assign you some chores to do. For one thing, like I just said, it teaches you how to be a worker, how to work. It teaches you how to take directions from somebody. Because when you go out and get a job in, in the world, you're gonna have a boss. And that boss is gonna give you directions and say, I need you to do this, this, and this. Well, the same thing in your home, your mom or your dad or your sister or your aunt or your grandparents, somebody's going to give you directions. So it teaches you how to listen and then do what they ask you to do. And then sometimes when we do jobs, we don't do them right. We all make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. So when you make a mistake, somebody might correct you and tell you, hey, this wasn't done correctly you need to do it differently. You need to do it like this. So that's called learning how to take correction. You, you don't, cause some, but the worst thing you can do is if somebody says, hey, you didn't do this right. You need to do it differently. And you got mad and you stormed out of the house. Do you think that would be a good way to learn how to be a good worker? No. Right, so you, when you have chores in your home, it's a safe place to learn how to do that. It teaches you many specific skills, how to cook. It can teach you how to read recipes, how to, how to uh, do a lot of fine and gross motor things like mow the lawn or carry laundry baskets or learn how to read on the washer and dryer all the, all the dial information to know how to use it. It teaches you responsibility. Is If you don't do what you say you're going to do, and then like to say one young man, I'm sorry, I can't remember who said this. He said that his job is to feed his pets. If he decides, I don't feel like feeding my pets today and he doesn't do it, what will happen to those dogs or those cats? They, will, die. Stop. they, they will get sick. So he has to be responsible to make sure he does his job, his chores. It teaches you time management. A good example of that is if, you have chores to do on Saturday, like you said, you're cleaning your bathroom. Well, if you had cleaning your bathroom, feeding your dogs and doing your laundry, but you had a party to go to Saturday night, you have to, you can't go to that party until all your chores are done, all your work is done. So it teaches you how to manage your time so that you can make sure to get your work done before you leave to go to your party. It teaches you to be an active member of your family. Nobody wants to spend their life having somebody else take care of them. We all want to be independent people. We all want to be able to do things for ourselves. Doing chores and learning how to do the, that work teaches you that. 
So you can see why chores are so important because everything you do in your chores helps you to be successful when you get that job in the community, okay? I want you to open your chat box up and I want you to type in what your favorite chore to do is that you're doing now. And then after you type in what your chores are, you can look and see what all your friends are doing for chores and it might give you some good ideas and you might see who you have something in common with. Hey, John and I both feed our pets every day, putting away the dishes, making my mom, oh, somebody said they make their mom coffee every morning, that's very cool. Cleaning their room. Somebody said their favorite chore is making a salad. They like to chop the toppings. That's really unique, I love that. When I was growing up, my chore in the house, every night when we had salad, I had to make the salad too. That was my job. So we have that in common. Okay, just in case none of these things were listed, I gave you another list of samples of chores that many people do in the homes. Set the table, wash the dishes, empty dishwasher, take the trash out, feed pets, make bed, fold towels, do your own laundry and put it away, vacuum and sweep floors, mow the lawn, dust furniture. And I will tell you that I have put people in jobs out in the community that have done all those skills. They, If you learn to do them at home, it'll be much easier when you get a job. Like say the one, I have fold towels. I got a job for a young lady at the Hilton Hotel. She works in the laundry room and that's what her job is. She folds all the towels that come out of the dryer at the hotel. So she learned how to fold towels really well at home. And she told me that that was her favorite chore. She said, I love to fold the towels when they come out of the dryer. So I found her a job at a hotel and she's been working there now a year and a half and she's doing great and loves it. So you can see how doing chores relates to getting that job. All right, so here's the big question. What type of job do I want? Before we can decide on what type of job we want, we have to talk, understand what type of employment we want. So there, I don't know how many of you know this or not, but there are lots of different ways that you can work. Some people have a job where they work. When I say something's competitive employment, that means that you are getting a paycheck and you're out in the community and you work alongside other people who don't have disabilities and you do the same job as those people do. That's competitive employment. And when you're in competitive employment, it could be either full time where you work all day long, five days a week, or it could be part time where you work for maybe a couple of hours a day or a couple of days a week, but you're doing that out in the community with everybody else. There's also an option called supported employment. And for many people who have special needs, this is the best option for them. Supported employment is when you get help to find, first of all, you get help to figure out what type of job is best for you. Then you get help finding your job. Then when you get the job, there's somebody, there's a job coach that will come in with you and make sure you learn the job correctly and that you are successful and happy in your job and they'll stay with you as long as they need to until you can do it all by yourself and then they wean off. That is a supported employment and those are the services you get through the Texas workforce. So many of you have already started thinking about that and when you get ready to graduate from high school, that is probably the route that you'll wanna go because it provides the most to help you. Then there's competitive employment in a sheltered environment. There are many places out there now. One of the biggest ones near us is Goodwill. I don't know if anybody's ever been to the Goodwill Stars program. There's one in Fort Worth and there's one in Grapevine. They actually get contracts and they hire people to work at the Goodwill Stars program where they make the same amount of money you would make if you were out in the community, but you're only working with people who have disability and there's somebody always there with you. That's a sheltered environment. That's a, a place where you, it's, it's very safe and you still have to work hard and work fast and work correctly, but it's not as competitive as it is when you're out in the community, okay? And then there's self-employment. I don't know if you know anybody who has started their own business, but self-employment is very, very popular for people who have disabilities. 
they, uh, I have worked with a couple of people. I'm gonna tell you just two quick examples. One was a young lady who loved dogs and she loved taking care of dogs. So she actually started a business called Pooper Scooper. And her business is where she goes, she gets people in a neighborhood and she went around with a flyer about her business and she got people to pay her to go into their backyards and scoop the dog's poop for the people. She goes every week to every house and she makes a lot of money. And she has an attendant with her. She has support and somebody who drives her around and helps her with the money and all that kind of thing. But she's doing what she loves and it's her own business. And I know another young man, I don't know how many of you have heard of Chad Snow Cones. Chad is a young man in Fort Worth who loves snow cones. He loved eating them and he loved making them. So his parents and he decided that he would start his own snow cone business. And they bought a little tiny food truck and they put the equipment in it. And he hired some of his friends from school to help, work, help him work there. And they go around to different events and they sell their snow cones. And he's very successful. They even did, had him on the news one day because his, his snow cone hut was doing so well. So those are examples of things that you could start a business on your own. I even had a young man one time uh, many years ago in Grapevine who loved to shred paper. This young man could barely talk. He, he was not very verbal, but he loved to shred paper. So his parents bought a big shredder and a truck and they hired somebody to help him. And this person drives him to office buildings and the people in the buildings pay him to shred their documents and their papers. And he loves it and he's super happy. So those are examples of self-employment. Another big type of option to work is volunteer work. If working out in the community for money where you have to work fast and hard and accurate and sometimes it becomes overwhelming is, is not what you think would be best for you, you can still work, but you would do volunteer work. Volunteer work is when you have a job, but you don't get paid. You do the work because it makes you happy and it helps your community and you're giving back to people. You're helping people less fortunate than you. And it makes you feel good about yourself for doing that. Our, our society thrives on volunteers. If we didn't have volunteers to help us do things, we would, it would be a really sad place. We wouldn't be able to have all the things that we have. So volunteer work is very, very important. And it's a good way to stay busy and keep working without that level of stress of a real job. And the last one is there's some people that working outside their home is just too much for them. They either don't have the skills or behavior or what to be successful. So it's important that they develop work in their home through chores or at their day program that they go to, okay? I did just wanna quickly list to you different places that you could do that volunteer work. Remember I was telling you about volunteer work, what it is and why it's important. So some of the places that are really popular to do that volunteer work at are charity stores like Grace, the Goodwill store. Those are all places that thrive on the volunteers that work there to help their, them run so that they can help feed the poor and clothe the poor and help people who don't have enough money to buy things on their own. Hospitals are a great place to volunteer. Um, the welcome, they, sometimes they just have people welcoming people that come into the hospitals. You're like a greeter. Churches have tons of options for volunteers libraries. I had a lot of my students working in libraries as volunteers. It helps with your reading skills. Um, it helps with your organizational skills. The airport, it's kind of far off there, but the airport has lots of different volunteer options for people. If you love animals, animal shelters are an excellent place to volunteer. I had um, a group of students that for a whole year, they went every week and their job was to walk the dogs because the dogs spend all day in cages. So without the volunteers coming in to every day take those dogs outside and walk them, those dogs would really suffer. So those volunteers are super important. And then, and that should say food banks, not good banks. Sorry about that as a typo. Food banks, food pantries, where you're stocking all the donated food that comes in that people donate to help feed the poor. 
Okay, so those are just some other things that you can kind of keep in your mind as different places you may want to volunteer. All right, this this I had to put this in because this is one of my most favorite. Uh, little cartoons because right before we talked about the volunteer sites i was telling you about knowing yourself that you have to know all about yourself so my thing is be like peanuts gang know what you like and don't like rita is that big enough for you to read because i can't read it i think that's linus with the blanket that says i'd hate to have a job where you had to get up early in the morning charlie brown says i'd hate to have a job where you stayed in the same place all day Lucy says, I'd hate to have a job where you'd had to be nice to everybody. <laughs> I, sometimes I feel like Lucy. I don't know about you, but sometimes it's hard to be nice to everybody. But you can see that the Peanuts gang knows what they like and don't like, don't they? They were sharing with each other the type of things they did not want when they had a job with it, which I thought that was kind of fun. Before like, we go on to talk about the dream job, um, just wanted to say one more thing about the volunteering, why it's so important. Whether that's your long-term goal to be a, a volunteer after high school, volunteering while you're in high school is vital if you want to have a job in the community after high school. I cannot stress that enough. I'm going to say it again. Being a volunteer, the first job is chores in your home. The second job you have should be as a volunteer even if it's just a couple hours a week. What volunteering does for you is gives you a higher level of preparation for that real job. Chores is the first step. You step up a little bit to volunteering and then you go to that paid job. It teaches you all those same, same skills that we talked about that chores teach you, but it's more like real work experience. And it also looks really, really good on a job application. Businesses, bosses, managers like to see that you are the type of person who wants to give back to your community, that you're a caring person and that you like to help people. And I have gone, taken a lot, a lot of students on interviews and every time there's a volunteer thing on their resume or application, the manager always comments on it. He always says, this is very cool that you did volunteer work here. That means a lot that you did that. It says a lot about you as a person. And you know they wanna see that you give back to the community. And the other thing is when you do a job application, one of the pieces of that application will ask you about your work history. Work history means what kind of jobs have you had? Well, if you leave it all blank, because you've never had a job, which is true for every single person, because everybody has a first job, it doesn't look great. It's what it's saying is, I have no experience, but hire me anyways. But if you volunteer, you can list that as work experience. You can list your CVS jobs that you have in the summer through Texas Workforce. You can list that as work experience, but it's really, really important and looks really, really good and it will help you get that first job. If I had two people, one person did volunteer work and the other person did nothing, and we both applied for the same job, we had the same skills, we were kind of had the same personality, who do you think is gonna get the job? The guy who had the volunteer experience or the guy who's done nothing? Volunteer. volunteer. Yeah, it's, it's that important. I can't stress it enough, guys. I'm a big, big believer that every one of you should be doing some volunteer work in your life before you graduate high school, okay? All right, now we can move on. The dream job, I do wanna just mention this real quickly, and we'll talk more about this next week. But it's really important that you understand the difference between what is my dream job and what is a hobby. Playing video games is a hobby. It's, a, it's something you do in your free time. You may love to play video games and say, I wanna work with video games because that's something you love doing. But for most people, there are there's very few jobs out there. There's virtually no jobs out there for playing video games. There's a job where they play video games to find problems with the game so that they could fix it but that takes a lot of skill and a lot of schooling. 
you have to go to school or college or a training program to learn how to do that. So I just, again, want to, you'd understand that it's good to get a job in a high area of interest, but I want you to also understand that just because it's a hobby, something you really love doing, doesn't mean it's appropriate for an actual job where you're going to make money and get paid. Because the first job is often not your forever job. I had five different part-time jobs before I started working as a teacher. Being a teacher was my dream job, but I had to work in five different places doing other things. I sold, I was worked in a shoe store. I actually worked, drove an ice cream truck one time. I did numerous jobs that prepared me to be a teacher because the teacher was my dream job, but I had to do other jobs first to get there. So that, hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, so how do we find out more about ourselves? So one of the ways to do that is to do something called person-centered planning. I don't know if anybody has had any person-centered planning in your schools or not. Um, not many school districts are actually doing that anymore, but it's an important thing to know the pieces of what person-centered planning mean, means. The reason it's called person-centered planning is because you are the person in the center of the plan. Everything we're going to talk about centers around you and your education or training, which just means what, how much schooling you've had or training you've had, your independent living, which is those things you do by yourself to take care of yourself, your recreation leisure, your hobbies, your activities, how you access the community, and then what work or employment you've had and what you want to have. Those are all things you talk about in person-centered planning, and they're all things that if you talk about them, you'll get to know yourself better because all of these areas help you to understand what type of job to get. So one of the pieces to help um, with a job is something called a circle of support. What the circle of support is, is as you can see the little graph up there, it is a graph where you, your name goes in the center of the heart and the first ring of the heart is going to be listing people under each of those categories that help you or support you in some way, whether that be living, whether that be in a job or finding a job or any of those, those pieces. So I did a circle of support that I just kind of made up some people, but I put my name in the middle. So if you look at this, you can see I am in the center of the circle. Everybody around me are the people that help and support me. So the, under, the top of it says family. The first layer are those people that support me on a regular basis, usually every day, okay? So I have my dad, my mom, my sister, and I had two sisters, okay? So those are the people that help and support me. The next layer of the ring are the people in my family who support me sometimes. They're not around all the time, but if I needed them for something, I could call them on the phone or I could go over to their house or they can help me in some way like that. So that's my grandma and grandpa, my uncle Steve, my aunt Susie, my cousins, Debbie, Karen, and Perry. They're all people that I, if I needed help, I could call to help me, okay? So after family, you have people who support you at home and other places. So in the inside circle, and these are made up, but I went ahead and put Buddy, my support dog. Susan, my MHMR provider. She helps me because she provides things for me on a daily basis. Dr. Smith is my therapist, and he helps me on a daily basis. People who I see sometimes that help me are the pastor at the church, or my coach in my Special Olympics team, or I don't know how many of you belong to SNAP the Special Needs Assistance Partnership that's based in ULIS. That's a social group that does a lot of different activities. The person who runs that program would be a great support. The next one would be your friend. Who do you see on a regular basis that help you? Well, I had John, Sally, Tom, and Sue. On my outer circle, I had some friends that I had in high school, but they went off to college and they left, they were done with high school, they graduated. So I listed them because I still talk with them sometimes on the phone or on social media. So they're still in my circle. I just don't see them all the time. And then you have family friends, maybe friends of your parents, 
or your grandparents or aunts or uncles or sister or brothers that help you. Or like what I put in here is I have a next door neighbor who helps me whenever I need them. They come over every time. And then I have friends who live in a different state, but I know I could call them if I need them, okay? And the last area is your school staff. In the inside circle, you have your teacher, you have the, the teacher's assistant, and then you have your speech therapist because they see you on a regular basis every day, or at least every couple of days, okay? The outside circle would be your job coach when you go out in the community and work through school, the occupational therapist who helps you with your writing and motor skills, and your principal. Maybe your principal helps you, comes in and talks with you, or if you had a problem in school, you could go and talk to your principal about it. So this is a circle of support. So I'm showing you all this because this is gonna be part of your homework. All right, the last thing I see here is another handout you're gonna get that is also part of your homework. And this is a person-centered assessment. This is where you're gonna write down in these boxes what's important to you and what's important for you. Because if we don't know those things, we won't know what type of job to get you. So what's important to me are those things that make you happy and feel good about yourself. What's important for you are those things that keep you safe and healthy. And then anything else that you need to know, you can put in the bottom. So this is an actual assessment that you can do at home, okay, with a person in your circle of support. I have worked with so many students when I'd say, what type of job do you want? They go, I don't know. There are tools out there to help you to figure that out. And there are different types of assessments or tests. One is a personality test and one is an interest test. The personality test tell us about the type of person you are. Are you friendly? Are you talkative? Or are you shy and you only like to stay by yourself? Do you like to have a lot of friends or only one really good friend? It just tells us a lot of things about your personality. Interest tests tell us what types of things you're interested in doing, um, whether that be jobs or in your free time, any of those things, okay? So here's three tests. These, some of you may have already done some of these at your school because schools do a lot of assessments. When you turn 13, they start assessing these things. And sometimes it's just a piece of paper that has a bunch of pictures on it and you circle which ones you like the best. But what I really want you to do is spend some time looking through these three sites and choosing one of them to do. So your homework is to print the circle of support map that we put up then, and you can also print my sample so that you can see types of ideas. Print the person-centered planning assessment. You're gonna choose one of the personality interest career tests that I listed, three. I want you to choose just one of them. And I want you to complete the test. And I'll tell you like test one, uh, one two, three test takes five minutes. It will not take you long to do it, okay? It's, it, it's not a long assignment. I want you to do at least one of those tests with somebody in your circle of support. I'm gonna tell you why I want you to do it with, some, with somebody in your circle. Because we uh, often see ourselves differently than other people see us. So it's important that somebody in your circle of support who knows you well goes through that assessment with you so that they can help guide you, but they also can give their opinion on some of those things, okay? After you do that test, it will give you a list of all the jobs that you're suited for, all the jobs that based on your answers, they say are good fit for you. It would be a good job for you to do. I want you to look through that list and pick one or two of those jobs that you wanna share with us. So write it down on a piece of paper. And then um, next week when we meet, I'll call on as many volunteers as we have time for who want to share with the rest of us what tests they did, who in their circle of support helped them, and what job they came up with that they would like to do. And then next week, we'll talk about, now how do we go and get that job? Are we required to do this? Sita, are they required to do it? Yeah. I'm not uh -huh. going to say that anyone is required, but you're going to benefit if you truly want to find a job that you enjoy and that you're happy with 
these are excellent tools to use to find that job. It's going to be, it, I'm telling you, you're going to love it. It's going to be fun and it's going to help you to get to know about yourself. This is for you. It's not helping me. It's helping you. Okay. It's not a grade. Not it's, nothing like that. it's just an activity to help you to know what you want to do. If you look at, if you go to the ONET online site as one of the websites, it will tell you what you have to do to get that career. No grade. This is just for your benefit. It's to help you. It's part of this program, part of this, these training courses you're taking. If you do not have access to a printer, if you look at this picture without the writing, that's one of the items that you're going to fill in. I think you could probably draw it on a sheet of paper. Yeah, or just write it out. For a great audience. Thank you. I can't wait till next week and see what y'all come up with.